and action. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another edition of Smokey Shoot Shoot. My name's Smokey McGee. You can call me Jason. Either one works just fine. Today, we are going to be printing a Benji. That's right, a Benji, because that's what I'm allowed to print on YouTube. And it's the way that I'm going to be able to show you my print settings that I use for all of my other prints. <clears throat> So that being said, these settings are what I use on my Ender 3 V2 as well as my CR10. I pretty much interchange the two. That also being said, these settings are pretty universal. So if you're rocking in any cubic, a Flash Forge, or even maybe a Prusa, don't quote me on that one. They actually might be pretty universal to you as well. That also being said, I am using Cura 5.1. So if you're using any other... Um, slicing software you may want to double check your settings all right without further ado if you haven't done it already do me a favor hit the sub hit the like let me know what you think of the video down in the comment section below is this the type of content you want i really only planned on doing one of these videos because well i think it's important that you see how i'm doing things without being able to show you how i'm actually doing things um so let's go ahead and jump into kira all right, so we have our Benchy loaded. We are printing rails up. You don't have to, it's completely up to you. Honestly, it just depends on how well your printer is calibrated. Um, is your flow right? How well your supports? We'll dive into some of this. Um, but we are starting rails up and I like to print my prints from corner to corner. Don't ask me why, I think it's more of a habit now. Um, I like doing the minimal back and forth that you can possibly do. Um, let's go ahead and jo jump over into our settings. And we're just gonna kinda list them from the top. So, layer height, 0.2. Layer, initial layer height, 0.2. Line width, 0.4. Outer wall width, 4.5. I actually got that one from one of Hoffman's readmes on the Hoffman um, tactical. Um, and it has actually worked out really well. Um, the bottom line width 0.4, my infill line width 0.5, just a little bit wider than you would normally do at a 0.4, just to kind of keep your adhesion together. And actually this almost takes care of some of the adjustments that you would need if you have a little bit of underflow. Um, walls eight, honestly, this there's a big debate. You don't need that many walls. Eight was what I did for one of my last prints because it was a little bit thicker. So I could get away with having a lot of them. Realistically, if I'm doing a handheld um, print, I'm probably only going to do three walls. I might do a max of five, um, but eight's a little excessive for this. So we're actually going to go ahead and switch this over to four as a happy in between. Um, seam corner preferences. This is something that I learned very early on that if you don't want that little weird wiggly line on the back of certain prints, the seam hider is fantastic. Sorry, um, what it does, it actually mixes where that seam lies inside the print overall, which is actually really cool. Also, if you're curious how to get these settings, you got these little three lines with the dots, click on that and it will literally give you the endless settings of what all of these um, preferences can be. Um, I, it can be overwhelming. This is one of the reasons why I break it down to the most simple. This is what I know I need. This is what I know it does. And we just go from there. Um, so top and bottom, uh, bottom thickness 0.8, top thickness 0.8, top layer zero it doesn't need i don't i don't even worry about it um bottom thickness 0.8 so because my top and bottom thickness is both 0.8 technically my top layer will also be a 0.8 um infill density so this one there is a debate i will do 100 percent almost all the time almost all the time that being said, if I'm doing something a bit more chunky, you may want to consider doing 98 to 99%. Sometimes it can save on filament. It'll save on time. 
and it can almost make certain prints a little bit stronger. Now, if you're doing a handheld rather than a double handheld, this could be the difference. Uh, uh, it's really not gonna matter, sorry, because your handheld, you're basically just doing uh, walls anyway. So your infill, only important to a certain extent for certain prints. I like to do 100%, just makes gives me sound of mine, but if you do, let's say a 99%, oh, I got rid of it, didn't I? There we go, infill, 99%. Triangles is the absolute strongest infill you can do, period, but may not be the smartest choice for our type of prints. Uh, if you are looking for something a little bit stronger for our type of prints, cubic subdivision is a great choice. You'll have to look it up a little bit more of the details. Actually, the print, uh, the general print settings, print general settings. I don't know. He's got a great channel, huge following. Chances are you know of him before you ever saw me. Um, but off of one of his is what I have seen this on. So I'm just going to trust his judgment because he's got a book and I don't. Um, material, depending on the material you do, you're using. I was using a carbon fiber nylon for my last print and the max setting on my Ender 3 V2 right now is 260 degrees. I was printing with the PA-12 with an all metal hot end. And this will come into play when we get a little bit lower on the settings. So we're gonna pretend like I'm still printing with the carbon fiber nylon. And I'm gonna show you why here shortly. So we're gonna keep it at 260 degrees. My build plate is only at 40 degrees uh, Celsius. Um, and this is to help with less warping, I do use, uh, not super glue, I use glue stick on my bed when I'm using the carbon fiber nylon as well. My print speed is 40. My support speed, you can rock up to 60 or 70. Because I'm doing nylon and I'm still using a fairly slow setting, I'm actually only printing my support speeds a little bit faster at 50 millimeters per second. Um, with nylon, you tend to want to go a little bit slower, especially on the type of printers that we're using. Uh, travel. So this is where it kind of depends on if you're using an all metal hot end or a not all metal hot end. An all metal hot end is exactly what it sounds like. Your Bowden tube only goes up to the very top of your actual printer um, and or your hot end. And then your filament goes all the way down. Whereas in if you have a regular hot end, your Bowden tube actually goes all the way down to about here. And your filament only has to worry about being hot down to about this section. So with an all metal hot end, your retraction distance should not be that far because all you're gonna be doing is pulling up the filament a little bit and you don't want it to get clogged inside the internals of that hot end. So a 1.5 retraction distance is perfect for an all metal hot end with the carbon fiber nylon or with any filament realistically. Um, retraction speed, 25, that can go pretty quick because it doesn't have to be slow on that. Um, avoid print parts when traveling. I just thought that was smarter, especially if for whatever reason mid way you tend up have like a small warp on a corner or something, this will avoid that. Um, avoid supports when traveling, never a bad thing. And Z hop when, uh, when retracted, I actually don't click. So cooling, I have it zero, specifically for the carbon fiber nylon. Now, before we hit into supports, I'm gonna show you something really quick. I'm gonna pan over, we're gonna go ahead and see what I have for this basically the exact same settings, but with the CR10 because it has a regular hot end. So with the material that I'm using on the CR10 is a regular PLA plus 210. My build plate temperature is just slightly higher at 50. Um, my print speed, 50. Honestly, I'm super comfortable at 50. I get a nice even print speed on that. Uh, these printers that I'm using are not built for a lot of speed unless you're rocking like a clipper or something like that. Um, support speed, again, I'm rocking faster than my regular print because supports don't need to look pretty, they just have to be functional. 
um, enable retraction. Because this is an, a regular hot end with a Bowden tube setup, I can have my retraction set up at five. Um, it may not sound like a huge difference, but when you're dealing with millimeters the entire time, five millimeters tends to be a little bit higher. Um, retraction speed, 45. I'm not using nylon and you can get away with this. Again, avoid print and avoid support. My cooling, I tend to do this with all of my PLA plus settings. I do a 20% fan speed, keeps it nice and even keeled. It doesn't overcool, so your print still has time to get an even adhesion. Um, we're going to go ahead and stick with the CR10 settings for the rest of this just because it makes sense. Um, there, I have the exact same settings on both my CR10 and my Ender 3v2 when it comes to my supports. Um, we are going to generate supports. You have two different kinds that I will swear by. You have the normal, and I don't always use that. I actually use tree supports more than I do anything. I do tree supports everywhere. My support overhang, I leave at 45, but I've also, I, I stay in the safe zone. If your printer is super dialed in, you know your settings, you can get away with doing a 55 or a 50% overhang. Shoot, some guys are doing a 90 degree. I've seen those videos, it's crazy. I am not that confident. Uh, support pattern, because I'm doing tree supports, it doesn't matter. If you're doing a normal set of supports, this kind of matters. Zigzag, I feel comfortable with, but it can be a lot of support. Um, support density. If I am doing tree supports, I do zero support density. It leaves the entire support hollow. And like I said, supports don't need to be pretty. They just need to be functional. All you need is something to be able to lay on top of. Um, so support density for tree supports, zero. Support density for regular, 10 to 15. That's the max you want. You don't want to do more because after that, you're just going to have a really hard time getting your supports off, um, especially in uh, weird crevices or holes that you are trying to poke out. Um, enable support roof. Yes, uh, this I found was more important than I actually thought originally. Uh, support interface thickness 0.8, just like we had at the top. Uh, support roof density is the most important part. Um, for the longest time, I thought I thought I could get away with doing like a point or with 33, uh, which was the standard when you actually click support roof. Turns out it wasn't giving me enough support for my roof to sit on. So if I have an upper layer and that's what it's going on, I ended up with a little bit of sag in between some of those layers because realistically, you're just printing straight across nothing and there's a gap. And depending on how slow your settings are, like mine, you'll end up with a little bit of gap or bowing in between. So. I got a little bit thicker with my support roof density. It makes taking off my supports actually a lot easier. Um, interface, constructic, um, cons I can't say this, con concentric. Um, it's basically just interweaving like that. And then lastly, brim or skirt. Those are the only two bed adhesions that I use. Uh, the brim I like if I'm doing something tall. It gives my print just that little extra so I don't have to use a lot of glue stick or any glue stick depending on what I'm using or printing. Um, it gives it kind of like a flat base for it to stay onto. Um, if I'm doing something that doesn't require a lot of extra balance to it, I'll just do a skirt, which does uh, two to three lines around the actual print. If you do brim, you can actually give it a brim line count and I'm pretty sure you can do a skirt line count in the settings. I just haven't ever looked for it because it was never that important for me. Um, but another reason why I like brim and this sounds kind of ridiculous, but because my printers like to randomly um, funk up themselves as far as leveling goes, or say I took the bed off ever so gently weird um, and then I put it on and I 
hit one of the the nozzles or the spinny things. So now it's a little bit lower in spots. The brim will give me a little bit of a cheat to make sure that my print is going smoothly around before I actually get to my actual print. So it gives you time to adjust your build plate before you actually get into the nitty gritty. It's kind of like a, a cheater. Um, and then we're gonna hit on one more little setting that I absolutely love, and it's called fuzzy skin. Now you don't need to use this, you don't. Oh, it, some people think it makes your prints look a little jacked up. I actually enjoy it for the texture. Be, it just gives you that little extra grip, if you know what I mean. Um, so you can do a regular straight handle and still get a little bit of texture out of it. It's fantastic. Um, it's called fuzzy skin. Fuzzy skin's fantastic, it's so cool. Um, but yeah, that, that's really it. Um, break up, support in chunks. I, that was actually another one of the experiments and I actually learned that one from the print general as well. Uh, it kind of saves on support or uh, material in general. It's just a lot less where it doesn't need to be. So all that being said, let's go ahead and slice just so you see what I'm looking at for something this small, how long I'm looking at. Um, and again, this would be for the CR-10, not for the Ender 3v2, just because of the lack of all metal hot end. So this little benchy would take me four hours and three minutes. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm looking at getting a bamboo. But that being said, all said and done, these are my print settings. I really do hope this helped. If you have any questions, Find me on the 2A print group. Uh, it's actually called 2A Printing on Facebook. You can also find me on Instagram under Smoky Shoot Shoot. You can check out my website, SmokyShootShoot.com, where I actually have all of my settings down below in two different forms. One is regular PLA on my Ender 3v2, and the other one says, so you want to print nylon. All right. I, I think I think that's it. That's our video. If you enjoyed the content, let me know in the comment section below. Sub, like, do the things. Love your face, and I'll talk to you later. Deuces.